All right, with the Darkest Dungeon now finished, I figure there may be some questions and such left. I know that I talked about doing a boss guide for the at least the beginning level chapters of the game, and there's still a lot of interest in me doing that. Please let me know, because I'll try and do them like sparingly, but there is a huge interest, we'll try and pump them out. But for this video, now that I've finished the Darkest Dungeon, I want to make a quick one to talk about some of my favorite classes and the ones that I usually take on missions. So we're going to go down the row here now that the Darkest Dungeon has been officially cleared. So the first one is the Leper. And the Leper is a class I know a lot of people generally don't like to pick. He can only attack the first two rows, he can only be used in the first two rows as well. But with the right quirks and trinkets, you can really get some mileage out of the Leper, especially in longer dungeons. He is one of only a few classes who can both reliably stress and regularly heal himself. He has some decent attack damage, he has one of the highest base damages in the game. And he's also one of the few classes who can actually debuff an enemy's damage. And we'll be talking about another one in a few minutes. But when it comes to the Leper, the big thing is you want to get quirks that will boost his abilities. Faded being a must have. Whenever I get a Leper, if they don't have Faded, I will usually let them go. Another good one, of course, is being armored or hard skin here. Because the plus protection on top of this can make him just survive and tank very well. And then when it comes to trinkets, anything that boosts his accuracy is really great. Unfortunately, I don't have too many really great trinkets at this moment. But stuff like the focus ring can be useful. And he also gets a few really good ones. I also like his class trinket here that gives him oh that's not it. there we go gives him plus protection and XP as well even though you need the second one for increased accuracy getting protection on him just lets him tank incredibly well and like I said being able to heal himself also gives him the opportunity to last in longer dungeons I made use of him pretty well during the Crimson Court epic level dungeons using that but again, because of his low accuracy, he's also the only melee class. You're going to generally want to upgrade his attacks as you go along rather than wait until the end just to raise the base accuracy up. Now that said, number two, of course, is the Occultist. And the Occultist may easily be my favorite class. He is an offensive healer, and the fact that he can go or he can be paired with the Abomination just is icing on the cake. But it's really his skills and the fact that he can also be that offensive attacker when you need him be, all puts him at the top. His healing though, the word reconstruction, is probably the best base heal in the entire game. And even though it has a chance to bleed, the fact that you can get this to crit and basically heal up almost any class of full is just worth it. When it comes to it, his class trinket, which I don't have anymore, which lowers his bleed chance, is great. So is the cleansing crystal. But any trinkets that boost healing, such as, let me see if we can get back here, Juna's head or the ancestor's scroll is perfect because that 30% healing plus will go really well with his high base. Now, of course, the downside is that he still has a chance of healing for zero. But that's just something you're going to have to roll with if you're going to take him. His attack, Sacrificial Stab, is amazing against Eldritch creatures, which makes him perfect for the Cove and the Darkest Dungeon. It has the highest crit mod next to the Grave Robber. Now, besides that, a very underrated skill, in my opinion, is the Weakening Curse. Being able to lower an enemy's damage is great when especially when you're dealing with longer fights or if you know you're fighting something that is built on high damage such as the giant manises in the crimson court the prophet and of course fighting the swine god get his trinket that increases debuff chances which is right here and it is very possible to guarantee it and while you can only stack it twice 
lowering an enemy's damage down to 80% takes a huge um, bite out of their damage. And if you pair that with classes that can raise protection, such as the Leper, Crusader, Man at Arms, you can practically just barely take anything from them. Another thing that I like about the Occultists is that they are good in almost every position they can attack from. So if you're dealing with a party that's going to be shuffled or enemies who can move them around, the Occultist can still use the majority of his skills in any given position. And that is a common theme for most of my favorites, especially the Houndmaster. The Houndmaster is the evasive tank if the man arms is built around protection. He can raise his dodge chance using Guard Dog, and if you give him items such as the Ancestor's Coat, it makes it very hard for him to actually get hit. But what makes him a really good winner in my book is that he's good in both back and front row positions. He can attack almost the entire party with his skills, and he comes with a really good stun, up there with the Hellion's Barbaric Yarp, as you can see, or Yap. But the Houndmaster is another good class that fits in almost any party, and his target whistle here is perfect for removing protection off of high damage or high defense classes or enemies. He's good in the cove like that, he's good against certain bosses, and he synergizes really well with other classes who gain bonuses from marking, including himself. With his uh, Hound's Rush here, also makes him really good against beasts, which is great for the Warrens and the Wield. But again, he's also one of the few classes who can heal himself in both ways. So if you need to put him in the back row like that, it does work. When it comes to quirks, again, things that raise dodge are really useful, but pay attention to the fact that most of his skills are range-based. So stuff like unerring is really useful, but don't get anything that raises the melee, because it won't do you that much good. Now moving down, we come to the Bounty Hunter, which surprisingly during my Let's Play, very few people actually wanted to be him. And the Bounty Hunter is a really great class. He's very versatile, he can stun as well as move enemies back and forth, and he gains additional damage for attacking marked targets as well as stun targets. Because of this, he pairs really well with just about any party. And again, if you have a mark-based party along with the Arbalists and the Occultists, the Bounty Hunter can just do peak damage. Now, my Bounty Hunter here is really lucky. We got Evasive and Hard Skinned on, but anything that also raises melee damage or crit is really nice. Another really great thing is he has some amazing trinkets. The Wounding Helmet is amazing if you want to just go for pure damage, but his class-specific trinkets can also help. When they're both added on, he will do increased damage and crit to enemies who have been marked, stunned, or are bleeding, which considering the parties that he generally is a part of, is just icing on the cake. But the reason why he's one of my favorites again is due to the fact that he can attack from most positions. And do not uh, discount flashbang and upcut. They allow you to move enemies around, and this is perfect to set up an enemy in the back row and try and move them to the front, or to send someone in the front row to the back, and thereby weaken their attacks until they come up. He's really great, great against the fungal uh, zombie guys in the wield, because he can push them back using uppercut or flashbang, and it basically takes them out for several turns, even if you have someone who's marked. The only downside with the Bounty Hunter is that he has no defensive abilities whatsoever, but that's why I usually pair him with a good healer, or someone who can tank or weaken the enemies. But definitely one of my favorites. And then the last one for this video is a new class, and that is the Flagellant, who was added with the Crimson Court, but he has certainly become a favorite of mine, so much so that I'm 
there's a lot of people who think that he may be nerfed in the near future. And it's easy to see why when we talk about him. The Flagellant has special, a few special abilities compared to the other classes. He has the highest death blow resist. He does not suffer a death store debuff. He will actually heal the party if he goes down to death store. And he's the only class who gains damage boosts when he becomes afflicted with Rapturous. So it basically means that even though he will go to full stress and go mad, he can still be of very beneficial use to your party. But his abilities are also really great. He has become the de facto bleeder of the game, with his punish having the highest bleed damage out of anyone else. Even more so than the Jester and the Hellmaster who was nerfed with the patch. He makes short work of bloodsuckers that way, who are already bleed weak to, or uh, weak to bleed attacks. He can also protect himself and transfer blight and bleed from another party member. So while he doesn't heal it, it's actually beneficial for him to take damage, thanks to his skills Accentuate and Redeem. Redeem is an amazing heal, even with the debuff, and lets him basically heal himself and another party member. While Exaggerate is just for healing himself, but doing massive damage, and of course, ridiculous bleed levels as well. But the reason why I like the Flashland so much is that he fits into my style of taking a very adaptable party, and the fact that he is essentially an offensive healer at the most extreme sense of the word. He can also heal using a very low, but a heal over time skill here. But what I like about him is the fact that I can take him into a party, even if I don't have a dedicated healer like the Acolus and Vestal, and still make use of him. Now keep in mind that the big thing about him is that he needs to get hurt in order to make the most use of his abilities. So if you run into a case where the enemies just aren't targeting him, even if he is marked, then he can't really make use of it. But because he is basically in the front row for the most part of it, it does guarantee that he will get hit at least once or twice. When it comes to trinkets, I like to give him stuff like the Book of Rage, and even those that raise stress because I don't really care about stress on him all that much. The only downside is that his class trinkets aren't as amazing. They basically give him plus, plus bleed skill chance and dodge, but I'm fine with him getting hurt, and his skills already have a pretty good bleed chance to begin with. But again, if you want a party that is adaptable, he is great for it. Now keep in mind he is religious, so he will not go with the Abomination. But still, he has quickly become a mainstay of mine in almost any party. But that's going to do it for this video. Hope I gave you some help in terms of building your parties or what to look for when you are assembling for a trip into the darkest dungeon. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to talk, ooh, tackle in the future, let me know in the comments below. And if you're new, be sure to like and subscribe and check back for daily discussions on game design here and on GameWisdom.com, where we examine the art and science of games. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And come back around 10 Eastern for regular streaming. For a collection of my writings, as well as weekly podcasts on game development, be sure to check out Game-Wisdom.com. Follow me on Twitter at GWBicer for updates throughout the day. And to help support everything that I do, you can find me on Patreon under GWBicer or Game Wisdom. Your donations can help to keep things running, and we hit some goals, it will mean more content for everyone to enjoy. So, thanks again for watching, and be sure to come back for daily discussions on game design on the Game Wisdom channel.